is going on guys welcome back to another video here on the loud and proud youtube channel so we're going to be going over just a couple brief things in the intro of this video a the wife's truck i don't know if i told you guys he had the air conditioning fail on this thing um and apparently it was the ac compressor was original and it finally just decided to take the crap so ac went out on that truck and now it's fixed on the truck not the cheapest thing to have you know pulled out and swapped and you have a shop do it which is what i did at the time it was a freaking hot week it was a heat wave through here i don't have ac in this shop like they did at theirs and so you know what forget it i'm just gonna pay them to do it because yeah it'll be parts plus like 300 dollars for labor but then i don't have to mess with it and they can deal with all the stress of it and sweating like crazy in the shop and they're gonna get paid for it versus me having to do it out here and then just end up frustrated half the time. So that is fixed and it was done in a day, which is also super nice. This truck, engine light came on randomly. Don't know why, it's an old Mopar thing. It happens all the time. I know that this happened a little while back where the engine light come on and it just stayed on randomly and it was on for like three or four months and it just went off on its own. I'm guessing it's the same type of thing where it's probably just on, no idea why. Maybe it's a legitimate reason. Maybe it's not because it's got 262,000 miles. I'm sure there's some kind of sensors or things that are just kind of, you know, giving it some, giving it some weird codes that it's setting off that maybe are not so legitimate, which can happen when you have that many miles on a truck. And then tucked back here in the corner, we've got the beautiful 1997 7.3 Power Stroke that is actually up for grabs right now. It's kind of tucked back in there right now. I just rearranged the whole shop yesterday. It was sitting right here. But we had these two sitting outside and I was like, yeah, I kind of want to rearrange it so everything can be indoors just in case of a hailstorm or anything like that. I don't really want to see any of the trucks having to go back to the shop for hail damage. So let's just get them all put inside and not have to worry about it. But anyways, that absolutely gorgeous 7.3 Power Stroke you see back there could be yours. Right now, every $1 is going to get you another entry towards winning that truck plus five grand. But the giveaway does end on October 8th. So do not waste any time. Hit that link in the description below. Grab some merch off the website where become a VIP. You can get entered to win this truck right now plus $5,000 in cash. First thing giveaway did just end a little bit over a week ago now. About a week, week and some change. About nine or ten days ago, I think. Um, which we should have a winner for that truck very soon. It always takes somewhere between seven to 14 days. Usually, of course, ends up being closer to the 14 mark, but that's just part of the legal process and the sweepstakes administration going through and making sure all the entries that are submitted are legitimate and everything. There's no funny business going on with all the entries in the system. And then they do a non-biased drawing and they contact the winner. They verify their information that it's correct with the order that was placed, et cetera. So that's how they do, you know, a brief you know, description of how they do the drawing and why the legal process takes that much time. It's just kind of how it always is with any kind of legal giveaways that are out there. It's always going to be a minimum of seven, but up to 14 days before you get a winner. Any giveaways where they end and they have a winner the next day, those are not legitimate giveaways and they're probably highly illegal and not following any kinds of regulations because you can't do that. <laughs> so the guys that are like, oh my gosh, well, so-and-so, they sell tickets and they get a winner like the next day. It's like, well, it's probably not a legal giveaway. So just keep that in mind when you participate in those because anything that follows the legal process, legal stuff always takes a lot of time. Not always convenient, but that's how you make sure that us and you guys are protected when you participate and to make sure that you guys get the best and most diligent experience possible when it comes to entering and winning a vehicle in cash. But the first gen um you know that thing was just everything about it was just awesome and then it's like the last day or two of the giveaway or like a day or two after i start that thing up and i notice it is leaking diesel fuel and i'm like okay that's not good and so of course i pull it into the shop where i have at least you know some ground surface where i can try to pinpoint where that fuel is coming from and see it strip and I get out and I'm looking at the pump and it, it's just kind of like dripping out around the seam between the upper and lower half of the pump. It's just kind of dripping out slow. And so I talked to the guy that I bought the truck off of. Obviously, it's not his problem. He sold it to me almost two months ago or actually more than two months ago now. So it's not his problem. But I did ask him just like, hey, you know, I know you said that you had everything on this truck resealed. Is this the original pump by chance? Um, just because if it wasn't, maybe there was some kind of warranty work on it or something like that if it was recently resealed, which of course it didn't look like it was because the pump looked original and everything else. Um, 
the, the pump looked more original than anything else under the hood. So I look at it and I'm just like, there's probably no chance that this is, you know, you know, any kind of a recent pump. So he said, no, he said the pump was one of the very few things on that truck that was not resealed or redone. It was just left, you know, stock. It was just left alone. I'm like, awesome. So he said that the truck before I bought it, it kind of sat most of the year, never got driven in winter. So he's like, well, he's like, I haven't really driven it since last fall. He's like, it sat all winter. And then this spring and early summer, I never really drove it until I put it up for sale. And then when you came and bought it, he's like, I only started it up a couple times for people to test drive. Um, he's like, but I never had it really running much before that. He's like, maybe, you know, one of the seals was basically about bad. And then somehow, you know, it kind of, maybe it had a slow leak that I didn't know about. And there was just enough air getting in to the seals to where it dry rotted them out. And there was no fuel in the pump and it, I don't know, maybe it somehow dry rotted and caused the O-rings of the seals to crack on it. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, whatever it is, it's no big deal. I mean, you know, if you didn't have it recently done and there's no warranty on the work that was done on it last because it's factory, then it doesn't matter. I was just checking just in case because those things like when when you could get a core charge swap for those, you used to be able to just pull the pump out, find a diesel shop local that had one of those as a core that's already been resealed and regasketed and rebuilt. And you could just drop yours off. Sometimes they give you anywhere from five to seven hundred bucks as a core charge. You know, and then you basically would pay anywhere from six hundred dollars to a thousand, depending on who built it and what parts are in it. You know, you could just, you know, basically drop yours off. They would knock off so much money as a core charge, and you could just buy one and just take it right back and just put it right back in your truck. Um, problem with that is now there's almost nobody that does that. There's very, very few specialty shops around the U.S. that happen to still have some of those, and they can find trucks that they can pull the pumps off, rebuild. That way they can still do a core charge type of swap. But that is pretty few and far between now. And as far as I know, there's nowhere around me that does that. We called several places and I took it to a very reputable shop here locally. It does a lot of heavy duty truck repair and just normal diesel pickups. And they're like, honestly, the only shop that might do it would be this guy. And if he don't have one, he's like, probably nobody's going to have one around here. So called them. Of course, they don't have one. They said, we haven't seen one of those in here in like five plus years. We definitely don't have a core on hand, like a rebuilt one to swap out. They're like, we'll rebuild yours. But of course, then I don't get any kind of core charge because I'm just taking my own pump and taking my own pump back. So that being said, there's no core charge at all. It's literally just going to be out of pocket to get the whole thing rebuilt, resealed, and back. So that being said, the first gen, <laughs> of course, now I had a fuel leak. So the whole pump, you know, if it needs resealed, we're just paying for the whole thing to get rebuilt because there's a good chance that it would need rebuilt anyways. And there's no sense in pulling the pump out and resealing it and not just getting the thing rebuilt for the person that's going to own the truck because the parts themselves are cheap. The time that you're paying for is the expensive thing. So, you know, they got to set that thing on a bench and work on it for nine hours between pulling it out, rebuilding it, reassembling, testing, putting back like, you know, hundred dollars an hour plus parts. Yeah, it gets a little bit expensive. And that's also assuming that, you know, they're able to have very few issues and just get everything knocked out. So that's where the first one's at right now. The pump's being pulled off it. And again, it's one of those things where I've got so many other things that I'm focused on right now. Like I'm not tinkering around with that especially with the fact that that giveaway had literally was ending and or ended right as that happened i'm like i need this thing done like quick because somebody's going to be getting this truck and i don't want them to have to wait an extra handful of weeks when they find out they win i want them to be able to just come and get it and it's just done it was done and it's ready to go and the shop that's rebuilding it they do warranty their work for x amount of you know, thousands and thousands of miles. So that pump will be good to go for a long, long, long time. Um, you know, probably a little lifetime of the truck or close to it. And um, it'll be done by a reputable shop that's got warranty on their work. So that way, whoever has that truck and whoever wins that truck, they can have a fully rebuilt pump, which is like the one thing on those trucks. I will say this out of the, I've owned, man, I don't even know. I've had five or six first gens, and out of all those, 
the blue one that we completely redid, we called the Restogen, it needed the fuel pump completely rebuilt and resealed. That was like 1400 bucks. My dad's white first gen, that one needed the thing completely rebuilt and resealed, and it only had like 90,000 miles on it. That was like 1400 bucks. And then this one, you know, I'm guessing it's gonna be the same thing. It's probably gonna be 14, 1500 bucks, you know, to have it pulled, rebuilt, and resealed. One of those things where I don't know what it is, but it seems like those VE pumps, like, like there's very few problems with them in terms of like mechanical failures. But like if you leave them stuck, if you just leave them alone, but it does seem like the the gaskets in them or the parts in them for whatever reason, like it's just stuff that kind of slowly goes bad. And then you just kind of start to notice it and you're just kind of like, the truck will still run and drive fine. You can still use it, but you're just kind of like, really, this is annoying. I got to take the CFX. So it's one of those things. Like it doesn't usually hinder that much. Like that first gen, I can still start it up and drive it around. It's just, you know, do you want to drive it around and use 20% more diesel fuel because it's got a drip, you know? And I don't know if it actually use that much more fuel or not, but regardless, it's a waste of fuel and it's a waste of resources and it needs fixed. So that's being done right now. And hopefully by time, we find out who won that truck, that thing will be back, so it's ready to go with no delays. And of course, the reason you're probably clicking on this video is this thing right here. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna start this truck up, pull it out, kind of go over it a little bit with you guys, show you some of the features and things about it, and go into why, why did I buy this thing? But even if you don't care, I'm just gonna show you around because it's cool. We do have a whopping 149 miles on this bad boy. So yes, it, it was a it was a brand new truck. The sensors are alive and well. Get this thing pulled out here, flip my mirrors back out. And then uh, I'll just pull it out a little bit further away into the driveway here. So we can get you guys a good old look here. Pretty stoked. It's been a while since I've been in a fifth gen. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna kind of go into, you know, I don't I don't need to justify it, but I mean, why not? You know, let's just go into the details. Why did I buy this truck? You know, why? I already have the old half ton. You know, we've got the giveaway trucks on hand. You know, technically I can drive those. I mean, I do own them while I have them, you know? So, so why get a new truck? Well, let's get into the details. And of course, my first modification was putting these smart liners in this thing and these these things are legit i mean they literally cover like every single inch of the interior which this one has that hump in the middle because it does have a middle seat it does not have the you know console in the middle but it does still have the big screen with that middle seat which is kind of a hard option to get as far as i was able to find like pretty much if you had the middle seat you were not going to be getting um, you're not going to be getting the big screen. You always would get like the little the little display there, which is no big deal. Um, but if I had the option, of course, I would rather have the bigger screen on there. Same with the rear. I did put in the smart liner in the back end. Again, it literally covers every single inch of the floor, which with the kids too, uh, that's worth the money. So guys, this is a 2022 it's a Laramie 2500 heavy duty. Um, of course, you know us. We had to get the diesel. We don't buy. We don't buy the gassers in a heavy duty. I mean, my half ton. That's an exception. The truck's sentimental. It's a half ton. It's acceptable. In my opinion, I don't understand buying a you know, especially with like a one ton dually. I don't understand buying like a one ton dually pickup or a heavy duty pickup and then getting. A 5.7 gas or a 6.4 gas. I mean, I guess for fleet guys that are doing a lot of lawn care and, you know, they have a fuel tank in the back and they do all gas equipment and the truck's gas and whatever. If that's your emergency fuel supply or whatnot or however you do your thing, I guess maybe that makes more sense. But for me personally, it's like if you're going to buy gas and you're going to lose some of the point of having a heavy duty truck in some cases, like just buy a half ton then. Um, but anyways, all that aside, Trucks are 2022, and you're probably asking, like, why 2022 over a 23 or even the 24s? They're coming out already now. Like, why? Why a 2022? And I'll tell you why. Because I wasn't really looking for a new truck, actually. I was kind of looking on 
line for my wife because she was thinking about selling her third gen and getting like a fourth gen Longhorn or something with like 150,000 miles on it. Ask me how I ended up looking at brand new trucks. I don't know. One thing led to another. I'm looking around and I'm like, you know what? I'm like, I'm just going to see what are the new prices on trucks right now. And of course, if you're buying like, you know, brand, brand new, latest and greatest 23s and 24s, you know, for Chevrolet and for the Ford stuff, their stuff is either selling at sticker or like well over sticker. And most of this stuff still is. But I was looking at these and I found this one that had popped up. The sticker on this truck was like 83.5. Like it was like really high. And it was previously listed at almost 90 grand. And then when I saw it, they had just like, I'm talking like within an hour, they had just listed with a completely reduced price. And it was like newly reduced price. And they had dropped the price like almost $30,000. And I was like, 30 grand. I'm like, holy crap. So this truck was like, you know, I'm not going to give specifics, but it was in the sixties. And if you don't know anything about the truck market right now for Laramie 2,500, it's got the cab lights. It's got the factory spray and bed liner. It's got the big infotainment screen. Like it's got a lot of nice options. It's got the Ram air suspension in the rear. Like it's got a lot of nice options. Um, I mean, for the money, it had a lot of nice options. The only thing it doesn't really have is like the moon roof for the most part. Um, but other than that, it's got most of the stuff that you would want that I would want on this truck. And so I called the dealer real quick because I was kind of like, you know, what's the deal with this truck? Like, I saw you guys had it listed for this and it said the previous price was this and it said that you guys reduced the price like, like insane, like not quite, but almost $30,000. Like, what's the deal with that? And they're like, well, because we have a shipment of 2024s coming in next week and we've got to get our last couple 2022s off the lot because they're like, we got you know, a few 2023s left, but for the most part, it's kind of hard to sell a 2022 at sticker price or over when, you know, there's 2023 sitting here for the same price. And now we're going to have 2024 showing up. Like, it's just a simple, you know, it, it's either we just keep sitting on it or we got to sell it. You know, we got to get rid of the truck. And I'm like, is there, is there any catch? Like, is there anything, any kind of catch to the pricing on this? And they're like, no, there's literally no catch. There's no like hidden fees. You pay a dock fee, which you're gonna do at any dealership. It's like 300 bucks. Like other than that, there's no hidden fees. All you pay is the price that you saw plus tax, whatever your local tax is in your state and that's it. And I'm like, deal. So got the truck, got it shipped here. Shipping was actually very reasonable and it was just too good of a deal to pass. And I was looking up these trucks with rebuilt titles with 20,000 miles on them. I was looking at these trucks with 50,000 miles on them that are like two or three years used. And I'm like, I cannot beat this price. <laughs> like just, at least in my local market, I there's just no way. Like these trucks used, I found the same truck used with like, I think it was 22,000 miles on it. And it was like a one or two year old model and it was listed for 70 grand local. So, you know, it's just one of those things where I honestly don't really, it doesn't really have to be brand new. I'm not like, I have to buy a brand new truck. I'm going to get myself a new truck. But when the deal happened to pop up and I just happened to be the one to see it and jump on it, it was just one of those things where I'm like, I've been thinking about getting myself a new truck, but I've been kind of talking myself out of it because I'm like, I don't want to pay 10 grand over a freaking sticker for a truck. It just financially, it doesn't make any sense to do that when at some point the prices will stabilize and I'm just going to get screwed over on the, on the deal. So it was one of those things where the price was the price was great. I didn't really see how I could go wrong with it, and you know I'm like, well, let's do it. Let's get a new truck. And it's definitely filthy from sitting on the trailer getting hauled over. And then I did drive it in the rain yesterday. Of course, my kid touched the door, which is wonderful. But uh, it's got the factory bed liner. It's got your 115 in the bed. It's got all the tie down hooks. Um, like I said, it's got the Ram air suspension. which wasn't like a deal breaker. I didn't even know it had it, but it did. Going on the interior, it does not have steps, which is kind of a bummer. I don't necessarily care for the look of the steps, but I do kind of now realize the functionality is actually very beneficial because you can grab the handle and step on the step and get in versus grab the handle and you have to like stride up so high to get your foot up in here. Um, just kind of just kind of would be one of those nice things to maybe add on. Um, you got all your rear climate stuff. You got... USB and USB C's. You've got ventilation under the seats that blows back onto the feet of the rear passengers. You can see that there on that side. 
it does have the nice trim in there it's got all the you know the sound speakers and mics and all that stuff for phone calls and then also music and all that jazz it does have the factory sub under the rear back seat and it is an alpine sound system so it sounds really good you can see the alpine up there um but yeah it you know of course it's the new truck thing it's got the def it's got the def adjustable pedals so you know if you want adjustable pedals it's got that obviously the wheel's adjustable it's a manual adjustable wheel though you pull that i don't know if there's any other options for it or not but that's what it is on this then of course you've got 12 volt outlets everywhere usbs and usbcs it is of course four-wheel drive i don't know if you can get these trucks any other way anyhow center console storage move that flip this up more storage under there so plenty plenty of storage plenty of little hidden things like i said no no sunroof in this thing which isn't a deal breaker i've never used it on anything else that had it um it does have the laramie package so you know the seats are not like as detailed as like the limiteds and stuff but i'm telling you what these things are freaking comfortable and all the soft touch is awesome i love it i'm not going to complain about that at all i think it's it's pretty freaking baller it's awesome then of course in here you've got the pop out storage so you don't lose that storage container that you usually get with the center console it might not be as big but you still do get the storage tray that you kind of like to have another 115 right there a lockable glove box you do get more storage up top there with a light back in there um, it is a push button start it does have all the steering wheel controls but it's also got your trailer brakes built in with your plus and minus buttons it does have all your auxiliary switch options with wiring kit that actually came with the truck tow haul exhaust brake you know you can turn your front and rear parking sensors on or off depending on if you want it you can also just run the truck and turn the screen off if you don't want the screen on for some reason let's say you have like vision issues at night and you don't want your screen on because it's too bright and it's kind of a problem or distracting you can do that but in terms of distractions actually here's the other cool thing there's actually you know this is take it for what it is but you know we got kids right um there's actually these devices out there and i'm late to the party I mean, apparently these have been around for a few years. I never knew about it. You can actually plug them into your USB or USB-Cs down there. And I could just plug it in there, stick the little device in this box and close it. And then when I hop in the truck, I can actually stream YouTube and Netflix and literally live TV or whatever right here on the top half of the screen of the truck. And then on the bottom half still run my other stuff like my climate or whatever else i want to run on the bottom half whatever i want to do with that that's kind of it's kind of cool um again you know take it for what it is it's not recommended to do that while you're driving but if you're gonna do it it's kind of fun it's kind of cool so all that being said turn these vents open that way when the ac is turned on they work that's going to be kind of cool I'm, I'm interested to see how that works because it would be kind of cool to be able to do that especially on longer trips which is a lot of times what i'm going to be using this truck for which is what i was going to get into next so i actually did just sign up for the wi-fi for the 4g hotspot and um it's apparently like three months free but then it's like 20 bucks a month you know which i don't know how great it's going to be but so far i just did a bunch of testing on my phone getting on instagram texting my wife through the i message and i'm on airplane mode and only using the wi-fi from the truck and it everything is loading instantly and processing instantly so that's pretty cool but what i was going to say is i'm mostly going to use this truck for longer trips so like this truck um i'm not going to be using it a lot for like running in and out of town and going to get food and going to get groceries and running to get parts that's not what my goal with this truck is going to be and maybe that's maybe that's silly to some people but I do still have the giveaway trucks here, you know, at my leisure to use whenever I need to. And I still have my personal truck sitting in the barn right now, which I'm still going to be doing a bunch of driving and using that in, you know, the deer season and stuff, running around doing all my local hunting, grabbing feed, doing stuff, checking cameras, all that stuff. So I don't need to put all the miles on this truck. We also have a family car parked in the garage, which is, you know, perfectly capable of doing all that, which gets like 30 miles to the gallon. So it makes more sense to just do short distance running 
Um, but this is mostly going to be used for my, you know, I'm gonna go hunt in Pennsylvania or in the state of New York or Indiana or down to South Carolina. Like I do a lot of hunting and I do a lot of hunting also that requires me to travel out of town a little ways. So if I'm gonna be hopping on the highway and driving three, four, five, you know, down to South Carolina, eight hours, nine hours, it's, you know, this is the truck I wanna take. I wanna be comfortable with the leather interior, the AC, the floor liners to protect from the elements, but, but I'm gonna use this for those longer trips. When I'm just running around short distance, I'm just gonna use the gasser, or if it's nice enough, use one of the giveaway trucks, you know? So, you know, I don't need to drive this truck, but in the same sense, if I want to, there's no denying that hopping in a truck like this, if you have the ability to do so, over a, a much older pickup truck when you hop in to go somewhere that's a few hours away it's definitely undoubtedly more comfortable it's more comfortable it's more suiting for something like that now let's say when it comes to just you know hopping in and running into town and whatnot that's one of the worst ways to just put hey tons of unnecessary miles on when i don't even need to be driving it for that kind of stuff when i have other options for vehicles to drive but you know it's just kind of not really the best use of the diesel you know and in the aspect of me owning a diesel at all for me for my business that i run it makes sense because i can get way more deductions on this truck in terms of fuel in terms of you know business expenses i can i can use all that stuff for my business to make sense of it versus if i got the same truck let's say in a half ton ram 1500 gas yes in 99 percent of cases that would be totally fine with me for a pickup truck in terms of what I need, but in terms of fitting my business for what I need for my business, I get way more benefits by owning a diesel than I do a gas truck. And I hope you guys are picking up what I'm putting down there. Um, so for me, it, it honestly makes more sense to buy a new diesel than it does a new gas, just because I can use it more for my business and financials to make sense of it. So. Um, and if down the road, uh, this is not in my current plans for this truck, but if down the road I decided to give this truck away, which would probably be the way that I ended up getting rid of it if I ever do at some point, I say if, I mean, if or when I do get rid of it at some point, I probably would end up giving the truck away instead of just selling it to put towards a different truck. But in my current plans, that is not the plan. Uh, just because it kind of seems like whenever we've done a newer truck, newer, we've never had quite the response for it as we have an older one and i don't know why that is maybe it's just because we've done so many old trucks and that's what people expect of us but you know whenever we've done a newer truck it's always kind of been like why did we do that <laughs> like if these guys like a 12 valve more why are we like why even why even give away a new truck you know so that's kind of been the thought process behind it over the last few years but you know just for the heck of it if we were to give away another newer truck what would it be and what would you guys like to see if that were the case like i said it's not in the current plans but if it were an opportunity which would you like to see on the channel or not necessarily on the channel but on the website up for grabs for a giveaway which would it be and why but yeah it's filthy it needs washed that's for sure definitely needs washed but it does have the paint match front bumper paint match rear bumper and the thing that i liked about this truck that was kind of like my selling point on it was the price was the biggest thing but the fact that it had a lot of the features that i like and i would look for in a truck like this so like it's got the cab lights it's got the paint match front and rear bumper it's got a little black a little chrome it just to me just looks classy and it really reminded me of my limited dually that i had back in 2019 when those first came out that's what really struck my attention when i saw this truck i'm like this looks exactly like that truck except it's you know obviously a laramie not a limited um but it had all of the options that i would have wanted to make it look as close as i could to that truck but being a 2500 non-dually it just makes more sense for what i actually will use the truck for and i'm not gonna lie i'm pretty happy with it and you might consider me a little a little boring but i'm not really planning on doing much to this truck I know that's probably not what you guys want to hear when you come to watch the video, but I don't really have any big plans with, you know, big wheels and tires and lifts and all that stuff. I've, I've done that in the past and I'm not going to lie, it's fun for the first couple weeks, but when you run, you know, a few hours down the road and you're, you know, in and out of mountainous country and you're going hunting and you're doing this, and you're trying to pull through a drive-thru to grab something on your way to eat and it's just 
run through the bank, stuff like that. It, it's just not, it's just not convenient. You have to get out and park for every single thing and you just get way worse fuel mileage and you burn through more death and all those, all the different things. Like overall, like it's way cooler, but it's just so much less practical. And it sounds, I know it sounds bad me saying that when, you know, we used to do all this stuff all the time in terms of big wheels, big tires, you know, like everything had that stuff on it. But now it's just kind of one of those things where between the kids and my traveling and for hunting and stuff like that, it really just doesn't make a lot of sense to do that. Now, if we did decide to give the Drek away at some point down the road, I don't know if that would be a long ways down the road or not, but yeah, maybe we'll do some things up the way that you guys would like to see it. But in the meantime, I'm probably gonna enjoy it in its stock form because yes, yes, I'm happy and humbled to say that I could afford to modify this truck however I'd want, but I, I, don't, I don't really want to. Um, I kind of just want to drive it the way that it is unless we decide to give it away at some point then maybe go and do all something that you guys would want to see to it but for practicality sake growing up a little bit wanting the most functionality of it it's probably gonna stay the way that it is so hopefully you guys like it let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think about it did I make a good choice on my choice of new truck to buy it just reminded me too much of my old fifth gen and with a little bit more practical in terms of the setup, I just couldn't pass it up for the pricing, the deal, um, the options that it had for what I wanted. It just, it fit my needs perfect. And I actually wanted that front bench seat too, because we do have two little ones. So if ever like my parents visit or my wife's parents visit or my buddies that are all now married, if they visit and they have their wives with them, like we don't have anything else really. I mean, other than like right now we got the OBS Ford, but we're not, daily driving a truck around or my wife's truck we don't really have something that's comfortable that has six seats so I was like well I'm like if I can find one that happens to have you know all the options I want and it's got the six seat but it's also got the big screen and it's also like I wanted a very specific criteria which is actually kind of weird and then like this was the first one that popped up and it was the only one that met all of those things it was black and paint matched bumpers with just a little bit of chrome and it was the six seat with the big screen with like just some of the features that i wanted that i was kind of like probably not gonna be able to get too picky looking for a 2022 model that's still brand new for a screaming deal with all the specifics but i just happened to find the only one in the country that was set up the exact way that i wanted it and the exact price range that i was willing to pay for one and it was just a screaming deal. I couldn't pass it up. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Don't forget that if you want to enter to win the crew cab, long bed, four wheel drive, OBS, F350, seven through power stroke plus five grand. You guys only have until October 8th, which is not a whole lot of time. It's like three weeks and then that giveaway is gone. And if you want to get the highest and best perks of all time, become a VIP, why not? And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.